might want to save your report for next month. It's not an action item, and if we don't have hardly anybody here, what's the point of At our different time, 6 p.m. tonight, if you don't please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. This may be our briefest meeting ever since... <laughs> We have a very light attendance for various reasons. Carla, would you do the roll call, please? Kathy Walsh. Here. Robert Mueller. Here. Jan Braun. Sarah Menard. Mary Beth Ferguson. Kelly Fowler. Dina Kreitler. Laura Oliver. Here. Beth Caldwell. So we do not have a quorum. And Beth may be late. She's right. Right. And, and, and Jan. They both yes. notified us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. We don't have a quorum, so we can't do any action. So let's do this. Let's just chat it up for a couple minutes. As I said before we officially started, we might ask you, I know you worked hard putting this together, but it'll be just as good in a few weeks. So there's just no reason to give a presentation when you're just talking to the chairs, you know? You might send the data out, though, to, yeah. to Carla. Just give her a copy of it and send mm -hmm. it to everyone. That would be fine. That would be just fine. As we used to say back in the day, like with a cover letter and your data. Right. right. <clears throat> okay, so we can't really do anything. But I do want to throw something out there. Just throwing it out there. And then we can kind of work down through some of the things we know we want to talk about a little bit. And, and it's this, there is on this agenda, no action item. There's no action item. We're not talking about spending money, we're not spending money, we're not ratifying your budget, we're not, there's no action item. So we might think in future months, if there is nothing that requires the board's action, Whatever information there is to disseminate can just be, like we just said, send out an email and not convene people when the weather's bad in the winter or when people get busier for the holidays. That, that's just a suggestion. It's not a, a, a dictum. We can just kick it around a little bit. But if we're all just going to sit here and kibitz, you know, I'd like to go home. So what, what can I say? <laughs> and Martin already went home and ate. I went home. No. I haven't eaten yet. Oh. <laughs> I didn't snack a little bit. I see. Sure. I can tell you crumbs. Oh, hang on. Yeah. All right. Well, there's very few times during the year that we actually have to pass what is a resolution right. uh, for the board uh, because we are an advisory board. Exactly. Uh, but I think the meetings do give people an opportunity to talk about what's going on. And I mean, I don't, we all go to a lot of meetings, we don't need to go to all of them. I can't remember what the rules say about, is it a monthly meeting, uh, Carl? I started looking that up today, actually, and I got sidetracked. But while Carl is looking that up, Bob, why don't you go ahead and, can we do anything now that Jan's here? No. no, no okay, well, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I just cleared the whole thing. Yeah, that's we were moving along just fine. Yeah. Too, <laughs> I was going to say, shall we start just kicking up some dust and, and talking about the NPS meeting? I thought it was, a, it was an excellent meeting. Uh, it was well attended. It really surprised me how many people showed up for that. Um, we did have a public comment period, and predominantly it was people that, that had a, either it was an organization or someone that had property that wanted to say some words, and, and I think everybody that wanted to say something got to say something. Uh, I hope that the National Park Site people go back and take a look at what was filmed, uh, look online so they can hear the comments. I think it was the unanimously it was that alternate C was proposed. 
Uh, if anyone's watching, I would, would say that we still have until September 25th. If you've not put a That's public correct. comment in or want to comment on it, either way, you have until the 25th to do that. You can go on the National Park Site website uh, and make a public comment, or you can write to Sharon Miles. It was in the, the press release. Uh, we have it on the website, too. Okay. Very good. So, but I think it was very good. Uh, the mayor spoke. Uh, there were just a variety of organizations. and. I think they went away with the, the message that we wanted them to. I think so with. too, yeah. I was pleased to see some people I didn't expect to see, like Bill and Terry Hoffman, and then have Bill speak. That was, I thought, really good. You know, you think sometimes they aren't maybe keeping as close an eye on things, but they have a large vested interest in the historic preservation. And I, and I liked his remarks. I liked his remarks. Get to your legislature. Tell them they have to do this. And he was pounding his hand. You that sure have great. changed since you got off the legislative stand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, because I would have been the one saying that then. Uh, no, but that was good. And um, and the, of course, the funniest remarks in my mind were Carl Wieners. <laughs> my wife told whatever, me. Whatever he said. <laughs> my wife told me not to get up and say anything. Yeah, That's what he said. We all had that at one time. At least not in my I cracked up. I absolutely cracked up. What a way to break the ice, you know. But I agree, Bob. It, the meeting went splendidly. Just splendidly. And I think that if people that had concerns or had questions could talk to the, the National Park yeah. people and, and get the answers. Uh, both Sharon, uh, Miles, and Natalie uh, Franz had been here before. Their boss had not. I think he got a, two days of touring historic homes mm -hmm. and, and meeting with people and got a good idea of what we're all about. And what a refreshingly outgoing young man he is. Uh, Very he impressive. He to enjoy it. Yeah, he really we did. We owe him a debt of gratitude for violating their own stated procedure and spending that first 15 minutes. Was, yeah. That was key to me. That's why he's the regional chairman or whatever they call him, regional director, yeah. Because he picked up on that right away, that we wanted something else. Well, and a bunch of people were sitting around and didn't know what to do. Yeah. Somebody had to tell them, Here, here's what you did. There you go. Yeah, he, he was very refreshing. I enjoyed what his remarks were, too. I'd also like to thank Kobe for kind of facilitating yes. the open uh, comment period. I thought he did a good job. And did you, Alicia, did you get to write all the comments down while he was standing up there? Who wrote the article? Is that your article? Yeah. As usual, she did her thorough job. I'm sure she of, did. Of covering the event. I didn't see it yet because I don't get mine until tomorrow. <laughs> what can I say? I did find it here. It says uh, the council shall meet monthly. However, a regularly scheduled meeting may be canceled by a majority vote in the forum. Okay, so it is what yeah. it is. I mean, and we have we have done that, on the, but I did, but I don't, re, I didn't remember that a quorum had to vote on that. And I'm sure we could do that electronically. I'm sure. sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I understand Beth is painting the trestle. Done. Done. Repainting. So Repainting. Re -re Beth is now taking a shower and cleaning yeah. up. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. You Were you do down there with her? I was down there. I didn't. wasn't uh, helping out. Did they use the paint we had stored in the basement? I'm sorry. Did, we, did, sh did they use the paint we had stored in the basement? Uh, yeah. You, you don't know where the paint came from. But the graffiti. I, don't. I didn't think. What, I, I would have sent a it was left over water tower paint. Sent it to, to the railroad. Purchased. We're going to find you if you don't. For a job. It, it was the wrong kind of paint. Uh, Somebody this kind of paint didn't come off your skin here. Oh yeah. I mean, as, there was, as opposed to you all the things you can think of using spray painted. Yeah, no, I'm kind of concerned. She, well, she just went over I with me. I'm oh, sure she knew what she did. Yeah, match I thought it was going to be, you know, oh, profane. Very profane. I, and that's a good Irish word. I'm not offended by that word at all. <laughs> but now it's been cleaned up twice. You know, maybe we ought to call her. When she comes, will it be a quorum? Yes. Okay, I was going to say, if we were still short, then we should just tell her pass. Stay in the shower. Mm -hmm. on, on the what's new and what's going on, and say, you know, whatever the name of that website is, there was a suggestion that we have a 
a wall apart for competition or whatever. So now you end up with something that's created and people would be less likely to face than a blank canvas. I see it go by the end all the time on the Union Pacific Railroad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's been very successful in Paducah and Cape and Mad New Madrid. Uh, Los Angeles has miles of it. And, and of course, the River de Pere. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it could spread to the floodgates and stuff, though, if, you know. If yeah. That would not be good. Yeah. You have on here the National Wildlife Refuge. I didn't get to go to that meeting. I wasn't feeling well today, but I know Sandra was there <laughs> and kind of just up there. Do we want to? Okay, so um, yes, we had a follow up meeting with um, representatives from the Fish and Wildlife Service, um, including their boss who has been with us on speakerphone before, but not in presence. And so uh, we presented him with the rough draft of the goals for the project, which are still under development and haven't been taken to the Alderman yet, but um, uh, he kind of gave us some input on it. We kind of went back and forth, and um, all in all, he was very encouraging, and um, he again specifically mentioned that they have um, certain funds that are available to uh, assist us in certain areas, not others, so we may have to, uh, you know, find funding to fill in the gaps that will uh, remain after we uh, proceed with our efforts in this regard. Um, and then after our meeting, we took um, we took a trip out to the levee, um, and courtesy of uh, Vern Bowman's guide service, um, we went between we went off of the levee in the um, there is a rough road that goes in between two sections of the uh, previous channel of the Mississippi River, the old slough up there. Um, and Vern Bowman, of course, knows all about it and what's here and what's there and how deep it is and what mushrooms grow on what trees and everything. And so we actually walked out. We all had our boots and we walked out there. Um, it's absolutely breathtaking to be in amongst the the forest and looking at this beautiful slough. I think of slough, I think of sort of a mud pit, but it's it's clear and it's deep and there's birds singing in the trees and there's you know frogs jumping into the water. It's really beautiful. And underneath this high canopy of cottonwoods and other trees that are there, there's almost no underbrush. It's clear. And so with very little effort, there could be a nice trail there, or there could be um, access to the water for you know families to take their children fishing you know a little bobber kind of a thing I'm sure you wouldn't catch anything really big there but it would be a fun kind of a place to be so we looked at that um, we did talk about um, both the Lake Audubon concept and of course since this project has been under development of course we've unfortunately lost Stormy Crawford and we talked about wouldn't it be nice and fitting to name some section of this project after Stormy um, Crawford and you know maybe Stormy Slough or something you know along those, along those lines? And they did talk specifically about um, the types of structures that could be added, um, both trails and boardwalks, and um, specifically he mentioned um, wells and. Uh, water carrying capacity so that you can feed wetlands if you're creating wetlands and of course they already have a well down there and, and Vern was showing that to them <coughs> then we went back up onto the levee and onto the outside of the levee which is really where we're um, looking at the majority of the wildlife um, habitat um, and access to wildlife viewing and education for um, the public um, and again we went out um, through the woods and saw the lake, which on paper we think of as the borrow pit, um, but would in future, um, you know, in the vision of this project, it would become um, something that you could look out over, you could again go fishing in. Um, and so they were really pleased with everything that they saw. They were impressed with the variety of the trees that are there, they were impressed with the variety of the 
um, birds and waterfowl that are already there. They could identify the types of birds from the song, you know, there's a whatever, whatever. So um, it was just really uh, a, a good experience for us um, on you know this little task force that's been kind of working on this concept. It was a great experience for them to see what we're talking about and to see it firsthand. And they even remarked how you know on paper it looks okay, but you get out here and it looks really great. They were excited about it. And um, wonderful. Yeah, it was it was a really good session. And so. Um, our next steps are to follow up with them about the status of the draft um, and then to um, work with Martin and the mayor and the aldermen on getting you know, a blessing to move forward on the project and going through all the protocols that would be required. So, Thank you. Yeah, that sounds like a terrific meeting, a really yes. terrific meeting. And I've read the draft of the goals. Yes. And I think you did a wonderful job with that. Thank you. It was, it was a, a combined effort. Bob, John Carroll, myself, um, Bernie, and we added some of his comments to it. So it was a combined effort. Good. I'm glad John and Vern are participating so that. Yes. Yes. Their guidance has been invaluable. John was kind of one of the instigators, I think. He was, yes. I'm like you, I think Bernie's involvement is critical. Yeah. He's excited about it. Yeah, well, yeah. He, 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 he's very excited about it, yeah. Yeah. The word excited was uttered by many people that day. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that, that's what I was going to say when she was giving her presentation about the, uh, Dan, Dave, what, what's the guy's name? Uh, Kriegler, Dan Kriegler. Dan. He said he was encouraging. He said, I'm excited. All right. <laughs> And he's the man who said, when I come to the table, I bring money. So yes. we love him. <laughs> That's, it's been very refreshing working with them, uh, the federal people and the state people for that matter on this. I like that idea about storming. I know two centuries yeah. of birding the Audubon on the back end in 1811 and storming in the, the modern days. I mean, that's from a signage standpoint and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, that could, could really be well. I mean, yeah. We, we have to not let that idea you just verbalized slip away and have something there named for and memorializing starting relative to this, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, we're putting up plaques. We can put up a plaque with a little story on it. Well, I think the director of the Wild Bird Sanctuary would be very pleased to work with us. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay. Upcoming events is our next discussion topic, and you brought them. I did. I brought these. Um, I'm sure, Kathy, I know you here. Yes, this. I get my one down. So I know everyone has these. Um, I brought extras in case you want extras yeah, at I your shop. Or, yeah. um, so this Saturday is um, the History Conference, the St. Genevieve History Conference. And um, you can still register for it. It will be at the community center. Um, we have a number of excellent speakers, including our own Leslie Barker, um, Dr. Frank Nickel from CMO, um, James Drury. Well, he's he has got some medical issues. Oh. And Jim Baker is going to fill in. Oh, wonderful. Jim's coming back to talk about what the tour guides tour guides don't tell you. Okay. Well, good. That's an excellent. Um, Rod, well, so Roger Carter um, talking about Vincent Joseph Dunker, early 30th century photographer. I think um, 20th century, that was a. That what, was, that, that, yeah, I'm I, I wrote 30th. Yeah. yeah. 30th century. <laughs> he was ahead of his time. Yeah. yeah he was. Um, <laughs> Becky Millinger is going to talk about um, silver in the fur trade and as it relates to the Antoine O'Neill project. And then Don Strand will talk about um, discovering Pelagie Amarillo. And for those who haven't heard um, that presentation before, that's a fascinating story. And it's now incorporated into the interpretation of the Amaro House. Um, the cost is $45 per person. Um, if you, oh, well, they have your phone number on here. 
plan on having several calls today. Okay. We're getting very close to having to close. Okay, so um, it's almost a full session. Well, it's it's just that we've got a few things to get ready for on Friday night and Saturday, we see, so we have to know how many for people. So people? Probably tomorrow is probably the last day. We had said Monday, but we kind of fudge a little bit on mm -hmm. that. So for, for those of us who are otherwise engaged on Saturday, is it possible to just go to the Gibor Valley for the reception Friday night? Well, we would love to have you there for the reception. Yeah, typically that's just that's complimentary with the, the registration fee for the for this thing, but I'm sure Kathy walk on down. Come over for the reception. Yeah, it's from five to yeah. seven. Be able to network with some of the speakers and yeah, I mean, that's all good. Um, so, and then uh, September 23rd through the 27th is our plein air event, and um, they continue to expand and add different nuances to this event. This year, on Saturday in particular, they're going to have an event on the Courthouse Square mm -hmm. with artists painting on plein air right in front of your um, business. And so, and Toby had a lot to get, do with getting that set up like that. Yes, yes. And it kind of spreads it out a little bit. Um, that Friday before is the fourth Friday Art Walk. And I know Downtown Renewal is planning to, in addition to the regular fourth Friday activities, they're planning to add a little live music at the end of the evening um, as part of the after party. Um, so that's at the end of the month. And over this past weekend, we just completed the Civil War Living History event. And Bob, do you want to, I understand the turnout was pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. We had a school day on, on Friday. Uh, Valley kids did come. You know, that was kind of a rainy day. And unfortunately, the kids from St. Jim couldn't make it for that. But the teachers came down and filmed the various stations. I think we had six or eight uh, stations that described a lot of the different things in the soldiers' lives, signing up. The history of the Civil War in St. Genevieve, and that went very well. And I thought we had a good crowd on on uh, Saturday. It was a beautiful day. Um, we, one of our guys, had built a, has built a cannon. We fired it off several times. We have our own little cannon crew, and they practice marching and, and drilling. He built and a cannon. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That just he's so we we know somebody who's got a forge. No, we barrel, actually sir. buy the barrel. There's people that build okay. cannon barrels still. But he built all the wheels and the, the wow uh, and everything. And it's uh, we've used it in a number of events and NSA doesn't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> we only shoot blanks. <laughs> but uh, we also uh, had a little water or not a water ball, but a, a cantaloupe swinging on a string that people could practice with a bayonet. <laughs> so, but it was it was fun, and uh, they were cooking over an open fire. So, I mean, we've had a great history here. We've identified over 800 people that, from St. John County that served in the Civil War. Both, most of them were Union, but we do have a number of Confederates. And uh, In fact, there were three Confederates there on Saturday. Really? Yeah. So, they were a little out. How many people would you say, not, not people who came to, to watch, but participants do you think you had? Uh, probably altogether 20, even down to a couple of little kids. Uh, a couple of few years ago, we had a pretty big one where we had horses and cavalry and that sort of thing, but uh, it took a lot of work and we got it kind of down to a one day of that. You know, I came down on Friday morning when the school kids were there and I took some pictures and we posted it all on social media and encouraged people, you know, this is happening today for school kids, bring your family tomorrow. And the school children were enjoying it so much. I mean, they were. You know, I've been to things with school children where they're kind of like, oh, God, this is the, you know, just boring, you know, whatever. They're looking around. They were all engaged. They were, you know, asking questions. They were doing the games out there, and they had the game where there's a circle, like a leather circle on the grass, and you have a feather with a weight on the end. It's sort of like darts, like old-fashioned darts, and they were having the best time with that. This was a bunch of girls who were playing it. They were like, oh, I got, you know, five, whatever. <laughs> They were really enjoying it. It's good to see. It's a good group. Almost as much as the participants enjoyed it, I presume. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's easier to have a good time when you see kids having a good time. True. True. But I think, you know, I think the goal of all of those things and what we even talk about with the MPS is to educate and to get youngsters involved in our history and our culture and that's a, that's a way to do it. And, and 
the fun thing about that and when we do like release events is the kids get to participate in things. It's not just you're not telling them they get to learn how to march and how to try to spear <laughs> A, uh, a cantaloupe. Give a kid a sword and a cantaloupe. There no. you go. He's <laughs> got their attention. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you want to add, Sandra? Well, we did have um, a display that we had borrowed from um, the State Archives Office in Jefferson City. That was well done and worked out very well. Yeah. It was a tent. Picture the white canvas walls of a tent that were imprinted with history information about the Civil War on the inside and on the outside. So you could walk around and read, you know, sort of, sort of like a little, almost like an infographic. There would be like a little bit of information about how you did a hospital during the Civil War, and then another bit of information about how one person, you know, was assigned to this in to this particular unit and the letters that they wrote home. So it, it was really interesting. And thanks to Gary Shell from Somewhere in Time because he drove to Jeff City to pick it up and he's taking it back tomorrow. When you borrow things, you know, you to take, it, take, it, back, take yeah. it back. Okay, do you have anything to say about upcoming advertising at all? Well, well I'd, just, I'd, I'd just like to make a comment. Oh, we sorry. got the, the Heritage Days in late October the last weekend. That evening we always have the spirit reunion. Uh, if anyone is interested in uh, being a character, uh, have them give me a call. Uh, usually you have to have a period costume and uh, sometimes I have research on an individual, sometimes you have to do a little research to do your little spiel, but it's uh, we're always looking for, for new characters to uh, play during that event. Last year was I think the biggest year we ever had on that and it's a fundraiser for the uh, cemetery restoration. Did you have any luck with the uh Propel microphones or anything? Like We're looking for them. I spoke okay. with Ellie. Um, Kathy is mentioning that um, there were certain sections of the graveyard last year in conjunction with certain people being a little soft spoken, where it was hard to hear them, especially when the band might have been playing extra loud up at the high school. So um, uh, we talked about it a little bit, and at Kathy's suggestion, I mentioned to Ellie um, Douglas that. Maybe it would be good if we could identify some lavalier mics on, um, you know, basically on battery packs. So she had a couple of people she was going to talk to okay, and see good. if maybe we could track down a couple of those just to borrow. If anybody right. can, Ellie can. I have one. You do? And you have one. Okay. Thanks. And it's, it's not affected everywhere in the cemetery. It seems to be sort of over in that swale area where the sound waves just carry right down in there. And I know we had some younger participants and maybe they were a little more difficult to hear. Thank you. So um, advertising wise, I brought just a couple of things that are going on. Remember I told you at one of the previous meetings that um, for the first time we participated in the spring at that time, um, Missouri Vacation Guide insert. This is inserted into the Post-Dispatch, the Kansas City paper, all the major regional papers and, um, and distributed through all the welcome centers and so on. And we have French colonial St. Genevieve, founded by the French in the early 1700s. St. Genevieve holds many charms for modern day explorers. A hidden gem, only one hour from St. Louis. Find out why St. Genevieve was named one of the top 10 coolest small towns by Budget Travel Magazine. This was before our recent recognition. Um, so top 10 cool small towns in Budget Travel Magazine. Um, the action item is to drive you to our website. And based on this, the, um, the ad agency that helps the state of Missouri Department of uh, Division of Tourism with this program sent us leads. This is a lead generator, and not all advertising is a lead generator anymore. But we got an excellent quantity of leads from this, from the spring presentation. And so, yeah, so I included this in the grant program um, for 20, FY 2016. Um, Midwest Travel Magazine, September, October issue just came out this week. There's a special section about um, Missouri in that with a number of ads of destinations in Missouri. And we have our Explore French Colonial St. Genevieve with the keywords included in there. Um, the other ones that are featured are St. Charles, Lake of the Ozarks, 
the old trails region which is kind of just north of interstate 70 west of columbia at several areas joined together um, they actually took out two ads in this wonder if that might be a mistake um, cape Girardeau, sykeston and missouri state parks um, are in this section i'll pass it around if people want to take a look at it that one also produces um, leads for us this is the um, Webster Kirkwood Times and South County Times, their day trips and overnight section. Um, we did this uh, the last two years in the fall and we just did um, the spring edition this year too. Um, I'll pass this around, but we have a half page with St. Genevieve's Tourism ad uh, across the top. The In St. Gem Nove is um, included. Thank you for your participation. Sweet Things, Sweet Shop, and the Art Guild um, participated with an ad about the plein air event. So that's a really good um, target market for them. I think the last time in the spring, I think the Rue de Vin participated. And then we have our upcoming events included, everything from September through the end of the year, we were able to fit in here. So um, this went out to the Webster Kirkwood Times paper and also the South County Times. Um, and that's always, I mean, we get people that mention that one um, frequently as well. So those are some of the things that we've done recently. Um, coming up, I think in the minutes from the last meeting, it mentioned um, Belleville. And um, I'm talking with them about getting included in, they have a magazine much like our 573 magazine. It's called 618. Oh, that's it. <laughs> um, and so they have a fall edition that will come out that will have um, information about hot spots to travel. Of course, it goes to Scott Air Force Base. Um, the heavy distribution is in those two or three area uh, counties right there around Belleville. It comes down a little bit into Randolph County also, restaurants and some of the um, uh, lodging and so on over in Illinois. So um, we're going to um, put uh, just an article and a St. Genevieve ad into that. Um, and I wanted to remind everyone, even those that are listening, that um, we've talked about our previous meetings, but the Mississippi River Nat Geo um, project, um, this is the meeting that we hosted a couple of months ago with representatives from the National Geographic. They came and talked about the Mississippi River corridor all the way from the headwaters to the Gulf and they're putting together um, a special website and businesses can nominate their own business to be on there. All you have to do is go online and um, enter your description, include some photographs um, and submit it and they will um, review it and provided that it's appropriate they'll um, include you for free in this um, uh, tourism website. So, is there a deadline for that, Sandra? I yes, yes, I can't remember what it is. I believe it's November one, but let me just yeah, scan this real quick. End of October. So the website is Mississippi River dot Nat Geo Tourism dot com, and they want all the submissions in. Um, I'm going to say the end of October. Do you, have more, do you have more of those cards? I only have this one, but I'd be glad. Can you, can you scan that, maybe, and just sure. send it out? Sure. Just Did anyone else get an email today from that Geo about geocaching? Mm -hmm. If I did, yeah. I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Geocaching? Kind of surprised to hear that. That geocaching. Oh, they're doing their own version of it? Yeah. Okay. So, at that meeting, there was some expression about a desire to get the word out and make sure people knew about it, and whatever. Have we done anything beyond that meeting? Well, that's what I'm doing tonight. Okay. Um, and we can email out about it, too. I mean, it's been in the paper. Um, well, as we're getting close to maybe near the end, you know, the, the, the sure. yeah. yeah, you know, by the end of September, have maybe we get another article in the... Well, and I can include it in my tips for tourism email that I send out periodically, um, specifically to all the businesses. I mean, I send it out to them once, but I'll send it out to them again. Uh, I'd hate to see any business miss the opportunity just because they didn't know about it. It's more 
significantly, you know, it, 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 there's a, it's somebody that we think would be a shame if it didn't get in. Um, Are you able to look up and see everyone that's nominated themselves? Oh, uh, once they get posted, mm -hmm. but they could be, um, you know, they could have posted their nomination and not been posted onto the site. They could have submitted their nomination and not be posted on the site yet. So. I'm sure Hank's taking care of it, but the Becker Rebo House would be an example of one that you would hate to see not there after you, know, just because it didn't get done. To, yeah. to amplify Martin's point, I think Bob and several of us can attest <laughs> to the fact that you can lead a horse to water issue when it comes to visit MoDOT or, mm -hmm. for example, just as an example, I mean, we pounded on that, pounded on that, and it's finally started to pay off, but it took a couple of years and hand-holding to take people that were familiar with it but just didn't take, you know, have the initiative or were afraid of dealing with you know, technical internet survey issues and so forth. Right, so if there was someone who was in the afraid of the technology mm. category, maybe we could offer to let them come down to the web, to the Welcome Center and walk them through the process on a laptop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't I, take very long. I think that would be successful. Yeah. I don't think everyone would need that service, but if anyone was feeling a little bit, um, I guess, inhibited about their own skills, maybe we could help them. You know, I'm fairly computer literate, I think. But I had to do something, and I won't say what it was. And, and <laughs> while I knew kind of where to go and what I needed to do, I'd never done it before. And, and it tends to lead to procrastination. Yeah. It's just because you're absolutely you're just unsure. Fear of the unknown. And once I got in, it was just like every other website. But at the time, I just wasn't quite sure. Uh, I know Ed Millinger videoed that presentation by National Geographic. Maybe, Maybe we, we could put a link to the video on our website. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Sure. So that's why I wanted to bring it up tonight. We still have um, six weeks or so, but I just wanted to stir the pot a little bit and get people thinking about it. Good deal. Um, continuing on with that thought, I may want to suggest that uh, Don and Ed maybe edit that down to hit the, the high points instead of the whole meeting. It's probably linked on the St. Gen Community Access Television the whole meeting. Well, at the very least, we need to advertise that that's an important thing to look at because it answers a lot of questions and gets a lot. It gets people excited about the potential. Yeah, yeah. I know a few of the businesses that have followed up on it, and after they've submitted it, and then it got posted, they're like, "Woohoo! I'm, I'm up! I'm posted!" Because uh, you'd have to know that the beta site is out there, but you can see what else is posted once it comes up. Yeah. To your point, yeah. so it's pretty exciting stuff. Really, it's going to be a beautiful website and free advertising, which you don't often see. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We have no committee reports. Next like, year, we're well, going to have to print some stuff. Yeah, just to comment on that, printing some stuff. You know, Sabrina made a comment last meeting about putting things on the brochures of what people can see. Oh, yes. And, and I think we're coming into the fall season, and I think we ought to try to restock our photographs uh, of scenes around town with people in them. And it's we're coming into the, uh, this beautiful time of the year, and I, I think we ought to really, people that take photographs ought to be out there looking for uh, ways to, to, even if we have to almost get, get some people to walk down the street. Mm -hmm. uh, stage it. Stage it, but get pictures with people in them. I'm always looking for that, always. And we do go out and take our own from time to time, like I did with your um, Civil War event. Well, exactly why I did it. another reason to miss Donna Charon all the more is there was no one better at staging people walking down the street in a costume or not than Donna. Yeah, you need to be careful. 
have a story to tell about that, but I won't put okay. your time. <laughs> well, one thing we could do, if we could think of what the uh, reward would be, is give the, let the B&Bs give coupons at breakfast and say, if you'll meet us at 10 o'clock at such and such corner, we'd like to include you in some promotional stock. And get the necessary releases and that sort yeah. of thing at the I same mean, time. Yeah. Yeah. Should yeah, we that's form a, good a idea. photography task force for the fall? I think we ought to get the word out for people. And, and again, kind of look, I think maybe we ought to set talk a little bit, Sandra, about what we'd like, the kind of shots we'd like to get and where we want to get them so that we can kind of set it up. What if we sponsored a photography contest and we own, you know, for participating in the contest, we own the photo that you submit? But with people in them, you shouldn't really get a release. Oh, yes, I understand that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, if you get everybody release. taking pictures, they don't really understand that release process. Mm -hmm. with the individuals in it. Well, as a photographer, I think Carla can be very helpful as in moving this forward. Like she didn't have enough to do, she's probably trying to kick me under the table here. <laughs> but, um, you know, you would be very helpful with that. Mm -hmm. Something about Carla, we didn't know. I did. You didn't know she was a photographer. Well, there you go. Really? No, I admire her for many reasons. But that was not one of them. I think we ought to maybe just have a brief conversation, Sandra, about what the sh what shots and where do we want. Absolutely. And so maybe you two can coordinate that mm -hmm. together so mm -hmm. not, neither of you is doing all of the work, but you can maybe kind of share the load. I saw some photographs that were taken during Jour de Fête in the garden at the uh, Jean-Baptiste Valley House. They are just absolutely so gorgeous. A friend of mine's two granddaughters, they're like two and three or three and four or something, were back in the garden and she was just taking pictures of them and they're walking through, like you were describing down at the riverfront, these leafy glades mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it, you can't move. The pictures were so astounding, it was like, oh, they must not be on Earth. This must be somewhere else, you know? <laughs> and it was just phenomenal. I, I have a feeling she'd lend us some of those pictures, but um, there, there's nothing significant. You don't see the house at all. It's just the, the plantings right. in the backyard that were just phenomenal. This is an excellent example of your point that you just made. This is actually one of the photographs that they used in that meeting that we attended with National Geographic. If you came to the Mississippi River, I mean, this is obviously the Mississippi River, but let's pretend it was St. Genevieve, you might never see this. But this photo evokes so much about why you would want to go there. So people in the photo, mm -hmm. the river in the photo, the St. Genevieve in the photo, or the garden of one of the historic homes, whatever it is, you may never see this when you're here, but this photo gives you every reason to want to go there. Yes. So. Yeah. Just a caution, pictures with children, you gotta really be sure you have an adult sign off on the waiver. I went, uh, I'm sure the fact there were two little girls eating ice cream sitting on the curb and it was a wonderful picture, but the mother berated me <laughs> because I hadn't asked her if I could take those pictures and when those sort of things, we just need to Yeah, geez, sure there's so much. Have the form the first and then yeah. the picture yeah. after, yeah. 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 Make sure you're taking a picture of something that actually exists in the community you're right. advertising. Right, that's that's what the point was last month. When visitors come, we want them to see what was in the picture and be able to see it, not just a one day of the year event kind of thing. However, the, you know, to set the stage for certain things, including French colonial, um, you may not see that every day of the year. You would not see this every day of the year, but it definitely makes you want to visit. Yeah, but we could have people on the porches of the historic homes or standing in front and, you know, just people, people things, mm -hmm. rather than just a, a blank slate of a building or a garden. Absolutely. If I can give you a piece of input, um, I think the cinematography and art directing of the uh, Marlboro or SEMO video that runs at the Welcome Center would give you some inspiration for yes. an, an camera angles. Yes. Because there's, there's some fantastic shots in that video. I just need some people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Does anyone have anything else? Yes. What was the name of the lady that made the presentation today? The chair of the Heritage Day? Uh, Lou Miller. Who is excellent, by the way. She gave this oh. extemporaneous presentation, no notes or anything. And has a lot of energy and well thought out. I mean, I, I was really, thought I was very impressed with it. But the one thing she said that kind of stuck with me is that this, the Heritage Day is, you know, we, we do a lot about French colonials, she said, but most of these people were German. And, and, and yeah, it was kind of like, why don't we do more to promote our German heritage? It was kind of the message I got from her. And uh, it was an interesting question. I, I will tell you, when I first moved back to St. Henry, my goal was to establish a German-American heritage society. I think in the 2000 census, 40 percent of the county's population claimed German heritage, and only 12 percent claimed French heritage. And people knew that I was really after this German heritage. And I guess it was when your brother came into town and had that meeting. And I stood up and I said, we have to promote the French. And the reason is, is because Herman is German. Is German. And even though we have a lot of German heritage here, no one else we can't compete with them, and nobody can compete with our French heritage. Yeah. And, and, and so that's why we don't emphasize the German heritage as much as as we uh, could. Her statement was, if it, if, it, if it weren't for the Germans, the French heritage would have been lost. Because it's those people that preserved. Well, the time period that they portray in the Heritage Days is 1860 and 1960, which was a predominant German period. As a, by that time, the French had pretty well gotten out of power. Yeah. yeah. So, but but, I think that point about what makes you unique is yeah. important. And in past <clears throat> the consultation with the state, the Boone and Tourism, they would made it quite plain that they want St. Genevieve to promote this French heritage. Yeah. Not to discount the German heritage by any means. But. We only have two things to sell here in St. Genevieve. French history and limestone. Liver <laughs> <laughs> don't. They're not nearly so appetizing. And they're not French. As limestone or French history. <laughs> is there anything else for the good of the group? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, we don't. We don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. We're Force done. of habit. We're done. We're done. We're out of here. Martin, <laughs> can I have the light?